privileged we are to serve the lord uh, to worship the lord this morning and um, before i go into anything i just want to say this message which was placed in my heart was way before a few weeks ago and has nothing to do with what uh, you know how the lord has been leading us for the last two weeks uh, and so i will continue uh, on that thought uh, this morning and let me i'm praying uh that the lord will bless it uh and very interestingly uh i was telling last week uh, jobin uh it's almost a just a flow through from where he finished and uh, you know we never discuss anything of that sort about the messages uh, but how the holy spirit prepares our hearts so uh we can look up to the lord uh for that uh i would go to the slide too yeah i have to switch it on i guess uh as usual which this is for my personal commitment before the lord before the saints and um uh for um, accountability uh james 3 was one not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly there is no excuse for that and so when i share the word of god this morning i want i want to uh, you know reemphasize before the lord that whatever he wants me to speak i want to speak because it has touched my heart um constantly throughout this last few months um the whole uh, thought for me is um god disappear yeah um is i want to, okay sorry i want to is um you know any decision that we make in our assembly for the good of it is it god ordained or god says move forward or stop and that was the thought constant consistently bothering me and so based on that um just wanted to talk on three different areas one is wilderness and crossing the red sea the israel this is a whole story of israelites uh, who were in slavery for 400 years this is for not uh, for some of the dear ones who are here and who don't have much background about it um they uh, israel the nation which is there today uh, uh, w- uh they were in slavery under egypt for 400 years and finally god himself came to the rescue and took them out of there and they crossed through the wilderness through the red sea and they came to mount sinai so we'll go through a few passages there and then in between there is a statement that uh, was called out who will stand for god and the third that i want to finish off with consequences of steps and stops there are consequences when you take a step forward there is consequences when you stop and these consequences can be good or bad and we have to be willing to understand uh, recognize that and move forward so um i think you guys will have to control it from there okay so um we will read a simple passage um sorry i shouldn't say simple passage we'll read the passage from the scriptures and then we will meditate on that Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 to 17 and Moses said to now this passage is um the Israelites have left Egypt um along with them a few Egyptians also joined we read in the scriptures on that so a few Egyptians also joined them who trusted in the Lord and they said we are coming with you and so they came they came to a place called Sukkot and that was a mine field and in that mine field there were Israelites working so they also joined and then they were led through a unique wilderness narrow area through some uh, rugged mountains god purposefully took them through that and led them to the red sea so it's a difficult track uh, and god planned it purposefully because after that the egyptians uh, chariots 600 chariots 
and from what uh, josephus the uh, uh, outside uh, writer talks about it's about uh, 250000 soldiers along with them so it was a massive army coming through and god purposefully took them through that rugged mountain so that these guys will already feel and know that god is in control now why did he take them through this rugged mountain he could have taken through a different route there was a reason and we'll come to that okay um so yeah i think i'll share that and then we'll go so the second picture that you see um god blocked this army of the egyptians the egyptian army at that lock in point in that mountain area with a huge uh, cloud of fire a pillar of fire and he made them stay there blocked them and it took you can imagine i'm imagining it's like a tornado with fire in it and so the high wind all the debris from the rocks everything is there and these egyptian soldiers are getting a warning don't go leave them and go your way i'm giving you another chance to live god gives several chances right and does that and the israelites on the other hand are so petrified they don't know what to do and at that time the moses said to the people fear not stand firm and see the salvation of the lord which he will work for you today for the egyptians whom you see today you shall see you shall never see again the lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent by the way when i'm reading this i just want to let you know this is not a message about what happened yesterday settlement or anything i'm being very honest before the lord this is a message given 2 3 weeks ago so nothing to do with that. we're just purely looking at the scriptures examining myself and i hope you will have the privilege to examine yourself was 15 and the lord said to moses why do you cry to me tell the people of israel to go forward lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of israel may go through the sea in dry ground and i will harden the hearts of the egyptians so that they shall go in after them and i will get the glory over pharaoh and his host his chariots and his horsemen now for some of you who don't know the background or the scriptures um, the israel the red sea where they came and they were held so with the back there's mountains now they can't go back because there's a flame of fire there blocking the egyptian soldiers massive powerful soldiers and the front is the red sea so they're stuck they don't know where to go there's no way to move and some of them are also crying why did you even bring us here you want our, you know us to die here and our graves to be here and that's was the, you know people were losing faith and at that time god says to moses lift up your staff and that red sea separated into two now i will tell you something beautiful about this red sea couple of things this red sea has a depth of 3000 feet now just to give you a perspective about it uh, which is the tallest building in the world burj al khalif right two uh, 207 2760 or something so let's say 2800 feet so if you stand at the bottom of that building and look up you can see the top this red sea that they crossed was 3000 feet downward and the israelites went through that 2.5 kilometers now this was not an easy journey okay the lord spoke to them in the evening and said guys get up through the night move and these israelites because they're slaves they were strong and they were already in their adrenaline you know we have victory we are leaving this place and the sea opened up and i was thinking it's dark how would there be light how did they even see and they're going down 3000 feet and then coming up to the other side and i was just trying to do some research um in the desert if you see you know those who have been in the middle east and so far when you're driving suddenly you see mirage like a a water like a uh you know mirror of something else it's some other place and that's the heat and i'm not a scientific guy so i'm an accountant so i won't go into it and you know mess up explaining all that anyways so that mirage light could have been that's what theologians say 
could have been that light the sun the moon at night whatever it is and the cloud the pillar of cloud that was there all of that together gave them proper light and they walked through that um uh, through that red sea to the other side now many might say it's a fake story you know it's a fictitious story it's and the bible has some fictitious stories now a few years ago uh, archaeologists found a lot of corals at the seabed okay before i finish let me finish this part other part of the story um you know i'm going with the thing that most of you know but i'm just also being concerned with some of the young ones who are hearing this for the first time from the scriptures so the israelites pass through they come to the other side and next thing they say this pillar of fire that was blocking the uh, egyptian soldiers was taken off and they suddenly got petrified their hearts start beating boom boom cuz these guys are charging in all authority all strength and might and they are also angry they've been held back the whole night from moving forward and they're coming full force and they're looking they're getting closer and closer and closer i'm sure everybody's heart sank at that point right you know how many times it's happened to you and me you know we say you know we're going for this interview trusting the lord the lord will give it to me but by the time you reach the interview place there's a little bit of fear let's be honest right because we're trusting in the lord we're trusting in the lord but there's that fear and i can imagine what would have happened to these guys and the uh, these soldiers are coming closer and closer to the earth. and suddenly the 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 sea just fell into them that dividing sea just blended in and they were all drowned the scriptures say not even one escaped they were all, all the egyptian soldiers with the pharaoh drowned now um uh so now one other thing that happened and when the archaeologists go to the, the bottom of the sea they had because it's pretty deep uh, they had to send uh, you know robotic um, cameras and they did that there are corals a uh, lot of corals unusual corals at the bottom of the sea so that's when they they were looking for some other thing and that's how they happened to fall on this now what they say is uh, once you know these chariots were all made of wood when they go under the sea salt they'll disintegrate and they'll be done but in the initial stages coral which is the underground uh, can i put it in simple words like plants or whatever it is they grow around it and today and eventually this wood gets decayed and disappears today when they go down to the bottom of the sea there is no wood uh, but the corals are in the shape of chariot wheels you go to google you can check it out it's beautiful pictures and so it is a true event that happened the lord stood for the israelites this is the god that we serve and you know uh, and you know the lord took care of the battle the battle belongs to the lord and it is so beautiful how it is so they crossed through the wilderness they crossed through the red sea and then they were moving to mount sinai now when i say this why did i mention this many a times we are, we go through difficult times things are getting worse in the economy people are losing jobs to be honest with you i fear for my job honestly because anything can go wrong everything looks smooth nice businesses are losing revenues we all know that things are getting expensive the price gas prices has gone up what is going to happen you know i was just uh, speaking with sister lil uh, litty and she was saying that mathicharian can't even come back there's no flights complications one after the other what do we do need to trust in the lord last week uh, jubin's parents were here uh, brother daniel and bindu and family it took them about 3 days they were stuck in new york airport and then finally they got a flight to go through russia to reach dubai this is the scene things are going to get worse where are we going to look are we going to end up just uh, just reading these scriptures and then crying out to god and say you know what god if this is what it is if this canada is what it is forget it you know or are we going to look up to the lord and say lord what is the next steps 
that I should take? When should I stop and look up to you and say, search me, O oh God, know my heart, see if there's be any wicked way in me, try me. And then, when can we move forward? And so, we will go to the next part of it. Oh, I think I should stop touching it. <laughs> okay, not very favorable technology. What's that? Okay, it's back, yeah. So, now next incident happens. They come to Mount Sinai. God tells, talks to Moses and tell, comes in a big thunder cloud. Everybody's scared and says, you know what? Moses, you deal with God. <laughs> we will stay away. You know, you, you be in the forefront. We can't handle all this. And so God tells everyone, um, a few days, Moses is going to be with me. And before that, uh, he says, will you all stand for the Lord? Oh, yes, we will not back out. We will stand for the Lord completely. And then Moses is called up to the mountain. What happens? They say, where's Moses? That chap is 80 years old. He's lost his you know, thinking. He doesn't know where he is. Uh, you know, we can start forgetting him. He's going up that mountain. You know, it's these eagles and they'll come and snatch him and he's gone. What's the, what can we do? Make a calf. Make a calf, a golden calf, and let's worship. And they did it. Just a few days ago, God spoke to them and said, will you stand for the Lord? I said, yeah, 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 sure, Lord. But when a simple test came the way, everybody got shaken up. Let's read that passage. Exodus 32, verse 19 to 26. And as soon as he came near the camp, this okay, this is when Moses is up there. He's got the tablets written, the Ten Commandments, and he's coming down. As soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burnt out, burnt hot. And he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burnt it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Moses said, Let not the anger of the Lord burn hot. You know the people that they may set that they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods that shall go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, okay, let any who have the gold take it off. And so they gave it to me and I threw it into the fire and out of the fire came this calf. That was a magic. You just throw something to the fire and something beautiful comes out. Oh, wow. And when Moses saw the people had broken loose, for Aaron had left them break loose. Who left them break loose? Aaron, to the derision of the enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Moses' side? Oh, is that what is written there? I'm sorry. Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around them. Moses is coming down from the mountain with the tablets. Aaron's going up to him, what's up, bro? We haven't seen you in so long. Come on up, man. And, you know, Aaron, I mean, Moses is angry. You're aggro, bud. What's up? You know, you're, you're a leader. Come on, calm down. Calm your hormones, bud. It, this is about serious matter of the Lord. And the Lord, and Moses turns around and says, who will not stand up for me? Or Aaron, no, 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 not for anybody. Or Miriam, no. Who will stand up for thee? The Lord, for his word. And only one few tribes stood up. That was the Levi tribe. And you know what they got for it? They got to worship, be uh, responsible for the temple, uh, taking care of the temple, uh, became priests in the temple. That was it. But what did they get other than that? They didn't have any position outside. They didn't have any wealth to take care of themselves. They had nothing. 
the only thing they had was the lord the lord when we serve the lord it is not about us it's about him will it cost us everything or it better when the lord says when the lord was asking who is on my side forget everything else have you read the scriptures then follow the scriptures who is on my side and the levites said and so they were blessed in the eyes of god and great men came out of that even uh, you know there was also downfalls in the levites group yes you know and finally samuel had to be pulled in from nowhere and all of that happened but the lord is gracious he is very compassionate he is a god of several chances grace upon grace upon grace and so the lord at this point of time the lord didn't say okay guys let's move let's go to uh, you know i'm taking to the land of canaan i know i know you guys messed up it's okay forgive you let's go guys what did the lord say i'm not reading that passage if you read that passage further on he said um, moses he called moses and it's very interesting you know i read through that and say lord how you talk to this man like this and then i started thinking lord why did you talk to him and he said because moses was arguing with me i said it's not written there but it's simple common sense because he told moses moses uh, you know these people that you brought from egypt you can take them i'll take you to the land of canaan i'll you know what as a favor i will give you also an angel take the angel the angel will be faithful because you know i i can i am i'm you know we a few weeks ago we we were learning on through the attributes of god god is a god of his word what he says he will do so he said i will send an angel but i am not coming and moses said lord 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 hold on hold on you, anything that is happening you are in the midst of it this is your inheritance this is your group of people that you have separated for his glory and so finally after confession after the lord dealt with 3000 people and you know uh, you know uh, i i believe a few months ago or last year one of the brothers mentioned from this passage and shared 3000 people died in that time at uh, when peter preached the gospel how many people 3000 people accepted christ god is a god of full of grace and he said okay finally i'll come with you guys to the land of canaan let's move on to the next consequences of steps and stops so we were seeing at some point god says stop at some point god says move when he says stop it's time to pray to examine to revisit look at the scriptures to follow what he wants and once he is with us we move forward to the next steps and here we see some consequences that happens exodus 34 verse 5 to 9 and why you know i remember i started off in the beginning saying that you know the message was like a continuation of where brother jobin had finished and the lord descended in a cloud with him there and proclaimed the name of the lord now this is uh, moses is again going back to get the tablets redone and uh, after that the lord writes with his own hand and uh, finally uh, he comes back so verse 6 the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord a god merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness he is a god who's abounding in love and faith he talks about forgiveness he talks about moving forward in the grace of the lord and you know last week also we said, read that i mean we were re- listening to that beautiful song too where or and also scripture when sin abounds grace superabounds it is scripture otherwise trust me this morning none of us would have woken up you think any of us I, i mean i don't know about you guys but i know i wouldn't have woken up it's just god's grace he's giving us one more chance to live for his glory moving on 
keeping verse 7 keeping steadfast love for thousands so thousand generations okay when you walk in the ways of the lord he is full of grace and mercy and blessings are for how many years thousand generations not for years forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin but who which is the lord himself by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation whoa 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 we just read god is a gracious god a forgiving god god is full of love that's the reason why you know i will still remember a few weeks ago where brother babu jacob also read that word verse and it touched me so much for worship you know god tried to invite everyone and people from the streets opened up their hearts and accepted christ and came forward that is people like us and we have the privilege to come into his presence because he's forgiven us all our sins if that's the case what is he talking about here right he's switching right there and saying i will visit it up to the third and the fourth generation isn't that a paradox he says one thing and he says totally different thing i mean where do we meet i mean i mean lord what do you mean by this let's read the remaining part of the verse and then we'll come to it and moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshiped and he said if now i have found favor in your sight o lord please let the lord go in the midst of us for it is a stiff neck people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance and he still asks for forgiveness and grace and mercy and more on. so then what does he mean by i will visit the iniquity um i put it in a very simple way <clears throat> all of us have a driver's license most of us have right most of the driver's license i was talking to one of the brothers i'm not mentioning his name he was very excited he and his wife got their g1 license both of them wrote their test and they are now all fired up to go to the next level so uh, driver's license that's great um uh, you know i can go and uh, you know maybe visit uh, ab in saskatoon and you know i'm not used to the place right so i go park in one of the sides and a few hours later I get a ticket. Oops. Now what do I do? I have to go contest that. Usually if it's a hundred bucks, you contest that, it'll bring it down to 50. Does that mean my license is canceled? My driver's license? No. I have my driver's license. I can still, I'm free to drive. The government has given grace over grace over grace. Till I die, I can drive. As long as you pay the penalty the government is completely leaving you free you want to mess up you mess up you don't you don't very simple and this fear has engraved into my life for a very long time and i drill it into my wife and my kids because we are all accountable to each other sometimes they put me in place and i'm glad they do sometimes brethren in this assembly put me in place i'm glad you do but as young or old there is no age limit if when warnings come my way if i can stop if i'm going to just go ahead i have a problem is god gracious of course he's not going to shoot me down he's going to give grace upon grace but there's consequences and that is serious just as moses said it's not whose side you stand on are you standing according to the word of god very 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 important oh this is now you know what guys uh, this is old testament you know old testament is not new testament okay um just for the uh, overall view new testament has clearer uh, not in more clear instructions but if you want to look for examples you go back to the old testament let's look at the new testament let's move on to the next slide in first corinthians chapter 3 uh we're going to read that whole chapter um throughout the last few weeks when i was going through the scripture so many people 
were asking me to read this chapter. And so I read that chapter. And I'm going to read it with you and we can all read it together. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid, not solid food, but you are not ready for it. And even now, you are not yet ready, for you are still in the, of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, another says, I follow Apollos. And are you not being merely human? Whose side are you supposed to be on? The Lord's side. Let's move on. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. He gets the glory. Nobody touches it. Nobody dares to touch it. You touch it, you mess with it. Verse 7, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is, is anything, anything, but only God gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. He who, repeats, he who plants and he who waters are one. And each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. God's building. Very simple. Let's move on to the next part of the thing. It's a, it's a long chapter, so not too much, but so. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. Someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The assembly belongs to the Lord, and that's where they're coming to. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will be manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, because grace over grace over mercy abounds. He will be saved but only as through fire. This verse is not for anyone else, but for me and my family. Let, uh, God is witness to this. This is for me and my family. This is not talking about your day-to-day -day works, your fight with somebody in the, in the office, or you know, while you're driving, or somebody cuts you through and you yell at them, bad words, blah, blah, blah. You know, suddenly you become, forget you're a Christian, you start you know, going crazy. Or, you know, while you're doing some ministry, something ticks off and, you know, there's a small quarrel between the believers. No, 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 no. None of this is going to be discussed in heaven. There's only one thing that will be discussed in heaven. Your spiritual works. Because that is what will be taken care of on that day of judgment. What standards, what attitude, what Final calculation with intention with which you did. And you know, brothers and sisters, in my young days, I have done this. And I look back and I say, what a waste of years. What a waste of years. My works will be burnt in fire. And thank God the Lord shook me up a few years ago. I'm not going to waste my time like this. Unless the Lord guides the steps, I'm not going to move an inch. If he says stop, you stop. If he says move, you move. The Holy Spirit will lead. This is not your ministry or my ministry. It is his. You know, yesterday, uncle shared something so powerful. Where are we going to be in the next hundred years? 
we will not be here none of us but what will last forever testimony testimony to the next generations and not just to the next generations in heaven testimony will last because when it is tested by fire if it is gold silver and precious stones it will last and i just pray for myself and my family lord please at least a few things if nothing because his standards are so high so high i myself am scared you know uh, we have this tuesday meetings where we do with international students you know sometimes you know uh, you know when lejo and i we talk uh, he questions me i question him on the ministry itself because we both want to be accountable to the lord in what we are investing what are we doing this for what do we teach how do we go about it what does god really want for these international students to see their lives changed it's serious it's very exciting oh we doing the lord's work you know and praise the lord you know what a feeling none of this feeling is going to be if the lord says stop i don't want you to be there there has been weeks i have never gone and i've called lejo and i said i'm not coming i can't there was times to stop to spend time in prayer and i did it it's very important let's move on to the next slide next slide this is very important very very important this is a verse that held me tight this is talking about the church verse 16 the same chapter do you not know that you are god's temple we are all part of god's temple his body and that god's spirit dwells in you if anyone destroys god's temple god will destroy him for god's temple is holy and you are that temple every decision we make every move we make is serious in the eyes of god is serious this is no joke don't take god for granted yes like we said he is full of mercy grace abundance there is no shortage of it none of us can we all of us will confess right thank you jesus for all you did but don't rub it into him and ask for trouble it is serious so as we continue to pray that the lord will guide not just my personal steps the first thing okay let's get to the point we're almost done it's not about the church please remember that the church doesn't define any of us get that very clear how does god deal with us he deals with us individually first as a family my responsibility is to see my family walks in the ways of god and if it's god ordained steps or stop we have to be accountable within the family a final result of that is when we come together to worship to have fellowship and we encourage one another is that serious it's that serious and remember one thing i'm talking something so scary and who what did i read in the beginning james 3 verse 1 who will be judged more than any of you me in that fear so you can imagine the shivering with which i am sharing this word it is serious brothers and sisters this has we all say this assembly belongs to the lord the assembly belongs i mean our walk and our talk should match very important very very important you can fake with god he sees the heart the innermost intention with which you do things and that is important i know of so many dear brothers and sisters who who didn't uh, spend time calling me or anything but spend time in prayer that is what we need fast and pray please do fast and pray fast and pray it's needed you know 
I will share with you something interesting. You know, Jonah's situation. Jonah went to Nineveh, Syrians, unbelievers. You know what they used to do? When they catch uh, uh, neighboring country people, if you read through history, you will see they'll put you on a hook, they'll tear your skin out and hang it on their rooftops. This was the people Ninevites were. And Jonah was sent there and Jonah was mad at God. What are you talking about, Lord? These people you want me to go preach? Yeah, he went to preach there. And what did the people do? Unbelievers fasted and prayed and to the extent they went. Sorry, I'm mentioning the name just for the sake of it. Even Milo couldn't eat. Animals are on fast. Everybody's on fast. Unbelievers, the seriousness of it, they knew. What's wrong with people like me? Honestly, what's wrong with people like me? We have a serious problem. And this Jonah, you know, in the end, we read a very abrupt way of uh, the book of Jonah finishing. And, you know, we think, hey, was this guy even a believer? You know, the guy went to share the testimony and then, I mean, the gospel, they escaped the wrath of God. <laughs> and finally, he was grumpy with God. Why did he just save them? And then that's it. It's story ends. But if you read through history, Jonah didn't go back to Israel. He stayed there. He lived there. And he died there. There were believers in that city. Even today, there is proof in history. Uh, a few years ago, ISIS went purposefully into Jonah's uh, grave uh, tomb and did half destruction there. You can still see it. It's still there in history. That was Jonah. Jonah realized the seriousness of it. Can we think about it? You know, um, can we walk in unity, in love? Not unity, uh, let, let, let me be very clear. If there is no unity in the light of the scriptures, that is not unity in the eyes of God. The word of God is the center of our unity. Keep that in mind. In the unity of the word of God, when there is unity in the word of God, there's unity among brethren. And we walk together. Every step, let it be ordained from the Lord. You don't put, you know, very simple as this. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but sometimes we put timelines for God. Uh, you know, some, some brothers are here who are literally, you know, we are all praying that they will get a job. Do we go and say, God, n within one week I need my job. Otherwise, no more reading the Bible, packing up, not coming to church. Is that what you do? You don't put a timeline to God. You don't dictate terms to Him. It's His, He will give it to you in His own time because all things work for the good of those who love Him. Don't push Him. Are you dictating terms on him? This is his assembly. Where is the seriousness of all this? It's sad. But, uh, including myself, let us take our steps in the fear of the Lord. When we need to stop, let us stop. Let us stop. When, you know, I was sharing with one of the young brothers, uh, you know, who wasn't coming to uh, the assembly for some time. And I told him, too, you know, think, you stop where you are. Put your brakes in your life. See where you're investing your time. And give God the first place. And I can tell you, and I just spoke to him in my burden. But there was an overnight transformation and thank God for it. I trust and I thank God for that. And that brother, young brother in the Lord, may the Lord continue to bless him. This is what you need to do. And that is why we read, uh, uh, we, can, yeah, we can go to the next slide. I'm just done. We were looking at wilderness and 
crossing that journey when we go through struggles in life when there's the red sea in front of us on the back side there is the furnace of pillar we don't know where to go who do we cry out to to the lord and he will deliver us he will open the way our god who has seen us through in so many things of our personal lives will continue to see us in our personal lives no doubt about it and will you stand for the lord god often ask that question will you stand for me stand for him according to the word of god and remember there is consequences there is consequence if there was no consequences to sin jesus christ wouldn't have come all the way from heaven come and died on that cross for our sin big or small everything he paid the price but he has kept one condition spiritual stuff when you do you are accountable and it's going to be very tough standards so let's when whatever way we serve different ministries that we are involved in do it not just with seriousness but with passion giving our very best because it's for the lord and may the lord bless us with these thoughts uh, let's bow down and look up to the lord in prayer Father Lord you shared from the scriptures to us um thank you for speaking to me and Lord you are holy